Hi all, Andy here and welcome to the first in my breakdown video vlogs. I'm hoping there's not going to be too many of these, but every time I break down with the cars, I am going to document it on the channel. Obviously I've broken down and hence the uh, depressed tone in my voice. So let's talk about the symptoms. Yesterday I drove it to work and it felt a little bit sluggish if I'm perfectly honest. Put my foot down and it didn't have that get up and go that 3.2 normally has. My local garage is not what I class as a proper garage, it is an eco fuel. I tend not to use it for the 3.2 but yesterday I did. However these symptoms were there beforehand because I felt the cars lacked a bit of gut for a couple of weeks. If I go right back to Talk Moto Cafe meet in February, got to the garage, turned off the ignition, filled up the fuel, went to start it, and it would just turn over and wouldn't fire up. So I sat there for a couple of minutes, tried it again, and it would fire up. There's no engine management lights on the dash, I might add. So roll the clock forward six weeks, stopped at the garage yesterday, filled up the fuel, wouldn't start. Sat there for a minute or so, tried it again, and it would start. Very odd. I drove a few miles down the road to the supermarket, got some lunch, got back in the car, same problem. This time it was more stubborn to start, it took a few attempts to get it to turn over. Still no engine management lights, apart from the EPC light flashed up on the dash briefly and then went out. Did have a code reader with me, so I plugged it in to take a look. Again, there's no DTCs, no engine management light, a bit confused. I then figured it'd be a good idea to drive the car home while the engine's running. Picked up my stuff at work, got in the car, got about half a mile down the road and the car actually stalled. So I managed to adjust with the momentum of the car, steer it off the road. At that point I started to panic. I'm 45, 50 miles from home, what am I going to do? And I have to say, less than number one I've got from this episode is get yourself some breakdown cover. I had no breakdown cover on that car and put the issue in someone else's hands because even if you can work your magic with the tools, sometimes you're going to need to be relayed home. So if you're looking for cover, I'd also get some relay cover too. I think relay and roadside assistance are a must. But of course, I'm lucky enough that I've got access to, let's say, a couple of fellow YouTubers that know their ways around the tools. So first port of call was uh, Car Chris. So massive thanks to Car Chris because he was my guiding influence and steady head as he talked me through a few things to check at the side of the road. So first thing we tried, because we felt like maybe it was a fuel problem, some form of engine regulation problem is we unplugged the map. When you're at the side of the road and you've got many tools, it's uh, quite tricky because the plastic's quite old if you want to become unclipped. Got the map unplugged, made no difference. But the rev counter was going up and down, so it is responding from that perspective. So my next thought would be, could it be the crankcase sensor? Because that has the habit of showing these symptoms as well, unable to start, stalls the car, the crankcase sensor unable to get a speed reading from the engine, I don't think the rev counter would be working. So I've got that as a potential problem, but at this stage I haven't gone for that. Also, massive shout out to Dom, because uh, I was speaking to Dom as well in our little TT chat group. Dom said, can you hear the fuel pump climbing when you open the door? And I thought to myself, hmm, I don't recall hearing that. I went through the steps, took the key out of the ignition, got out of the car, shut the door, locked the door. Unlock the door, open the door, nothing. Got in the car, stuck the key in the ignition to prime it, nothing. So it sounds like the fuel pump's not priming. At this point it's three o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. So I jumped online to take a look at some of the uh, Euro car parts type resellers online, see if they've got the part in stock doesn't appear they do have. I think that's been discontinued. The car at this point is to be stuck at work for God knows how long. I rang the local garage to see if they could come and get it and take it in. They had nothing until the end of next week, so it's another week without the car. So what do I do? I'm lucky enough that at work, I'm only about 25 to 30 miles away from a couple of uh, TT breakers in Essex. So massive thanks to Jason for staying at the yard until quite late last night for supplying me with a second-hand fuel pump from a TT 3.2 he's braking. So I've got the part, but at that point last night I had no tools to do it, I had no idea how to do it. Headed home with the idea of returning very early this morning at first light to try and sort the car out. So there it is in all its glory. Time to take a look at what it's doing. So I'm in the car and let's see if it behaves the same as it did yesterday. Probably going to start though just to 
prove me wrong. So, key in the ignition, any sign of the sound of the pump? No sound of the pump, no, no priming. Of course it starts perfect today, doesn't it? We know that's not the case. So today the revs are ticking over at about 1200. Yesterday they were ticking over at about 800. But that could be because the engine's cold so it's got a higher tick over. It's dropping down a bit now. Down to about where it ticks over but I can feel that throttle response is gonna die. It almost feels like it's ticking over so low it's gonna stall. I'm gonna go through the steps I went through yesterday so I will take the key out of the ignition. I'm now gonna lock it. I'm now going to unlock it. Open the doors if I've got out. Close the door. The window's gone up, so it's definitely sensing the door's closed. So I want to hear if that pump in the back here makes a noise. Let's see if I open the door anyway, see if we hear it. There's definitely no priming going on in the back. So I'm now in the back of the 3-2. Here I am, not a lot of room. So behind the driver's seat is the fuel pump housing. So it's got three screws holding it in place. You'll see in my car, the previous owner had a dog and it's one area of the car I've never ever taken apart or cleaned, but oh my God, what is under this seat? So that gives me a, a good reason to get it cleaned out. So back to undoing this housing. Oh my goodness, what's in here? Looking at this housing, peel back the cobwebs. This is what I need to remove. However, before I start it and start taking this apart and unplugging things and dealing with fuel, I need to disconnect the battery. So I'll do that next. Well, it is absolutely pouring rain outside and I've got to have the boot open to do that. So I've got the cover off, I've got the Plug, unplugged. I've got these two pipes removed from there. So they literally have a almost like a pinch connection either side. You pinch them together and they come off, so they're off. I've two pitched a line as Chris suggested. So now I'm going to use a chisel and a rubber mallet to get the ring off. I did not film the removal of the pump from the tank because you'd about seven hands and a lot of patience, but Chris has an excellent video on this on his channel that I will link above. As you can see from this side by side, the new pump housing is white and the tubing fairly fresh looking as opposed to the darker and dirtier looking tubing on the old pump housing. So a little update, it's all back together and I have heard the pump prime now when I turn the ignition which is a good sign. Car starts and it ticks over fast, which is what it was doing earlier. So while it's running, I'm gonna head home. I've got a couple of contacts between here and there that I'm hoping will save me. It's running a little bit erratic, but I'm going to see if I can get the car home, see what happens. Now, before when I was doing this and reversing the car out of this space, it was just conking out, nothing at all. Now, yeah, it seems to drive. So I think that's a, uh, a job well done for the vlog. I'll give you a further update when I manage to get home. Now you never like to tempt fate, do you? But I'm about seven or eight miles away from home and the car has driven absolutely faultlessly. I'm so impressed. It's just been amazing. So I think the breakdown is resolved. Things I can take away from this is one, get yourself some breakdown covers. So if you're not at home, not near your tools, someone else can get you out of a mess. Two, it pays to research these jobs online because there's lots and lots of help to get you out of a mess. Three, make sure you've got lots of great mates in the TT world that can tell you how to fix these problems. And also, look around. If you can't find a part 
brand new somewhere, there's plenty of great breakers out there. So I've got a few shout outs I want to do today for this particular job. First I want to start off by thanking Jason, Jason Case who is a 3.2 breaker. Thanks so much for getting me out of that mess yesterday Jace, keeping open so I can come and buy myself a fuel pump. It's worked spot on, really appreciate that. Next up I want to thank my buddy car Chris because when this car first broke down yesterday and I was in a bit of a flat, Chris was that calm head that was helping me talk through the problems, advise me what to do on the phone and when you're in a bit of a flap at the side of the road you definitely need a calm head to tell you what to do. So as always Chris, thanks so much for getting me out of a mess. Next up I want to thank the TT Guru himself, Don from the Parent Bros because he was firing over lots of solutions that this could be. One of which was something I thought about would be the fuel pump and that's what it's turned out to be. So Don, thanks for your elimination of problems. I also want to put a couple of special mentions out there to Darren from South Ockenden, who was nice and local and offered to come and give me a hand first thing this morning. Also want to thank Kyle Stocks over in Kent because he offered to come and give me a hand when he finished work today and get me out of a situation. He also has a copy of VCDS as well so we could have found other problems if it wasn't the pump. So thanks very much mate. So all in all, the car's done really well, it's got me home. So I hope you've enjoyed today's breakdown vlog, vlog number one of my breakdown scenarios. I'm sure there will be others, hopefully there won't be too many. But if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And also think about subscribing to my channel, if you've not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of info on the ADT TT Mark 1. Can't tell you how relieved I am. As always guys, thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.